All right, in this video, I'm gonna cover some additional ways you can do file transfers in Windows, right? And because I know a lot of people, you know, they get a little bit weary when they hear you're gonna be going up against some Windows boxes because most of the ones you encounter on CTFs are going to be Linux. So a lot of us are more comfortable on Linux and, you know, taking that leap and, you know, having to deal with some Windows boxes is, you know, a little bit tricky at first, especially when it comes to transferring files. Now, the method that I'm going to show you in this video is universal across operating systems. That's a nice thing. So you can use this on Linux as well, and it will work in exactly the same way. It's, it's really nice. Actually, this technique, I used it a ton on the OSCP myself because back when I took it, they this was before the update and basically most of the boxes were so old, the Windows boxes were so old that they didn't even have PowerShell available. So basically most of the file transfers that I did was either using CertUtil or this method I'm gonna show you here. And that is using Python FTPD lib. So basically if you're familiar with Python, right? It has the ability to run a web server. This is something we do all the time. You know, if we're dealing with you know, Python 3 is how I like to do it most of the time nowadays. I would just do something like this. Tell it whatever port, like port 80. And uh, well, you have to do this as as root, right? So if I do sudo, you know, let me do this. And, and this is probably something you're familiar with. Host your own web server. And then maybe pull down a file with like wget or PowerShell if you're dealing with a Windows system. You know, everything's fine there. And if, if it's Python 2, then we can simply do something like this, you know, the simple HTTP server. And actually, I think these are lowercase here. You know, something like that. Um, maybe it was, maybe it was uppercase here. It's been a while since I ran this one. But uh, yeah, basically, oh, dash M, right. Yeah, so it took me a while because that just shows you how how like very sparsely I use Python 2 nowadays. Um, but yeah, basically this is how you run a web server. Now, if you, you know, it also provides the ability through this dash M, you know, run a module functionality here to run an FTP server as well. So if you're familiar with FTP as if, you know, if you're going for OSCP, you're most certainly familiar with FTP. Uh, you can actually run your own FTP server using Python in a similar way. Now, the only caveat is to do the FTP server on Python, it requires to install a, uh, a third-party module that doesn't come pre-packaged with Python. And so basically, if you don't have it already, if you're running Python 3, what you can do is you simply say pip3 install py ftpd lib. And I think I do have it installed already. So yeah, it'll say already satisfied. But if I didn't have it installed already, it would just go ahead and install it here. And basically, once you have that, then firing up your FTP server is just as simple as it is to fire up your HTTP server. What you would do is just say like Python 3-m and pi FTPD lib. And then what port you want to run it on? 21 is your standard FTP and you'll see that it is starting the FTP server. So you would always do this from your attacker box, right? Now say we had some Windows host that we'd compromise. We got some command injection code execution going on it. We want to transfer a file. Well, now from the Windows box, we can interact with this just like we would anonymous FTP, right? So it is as simple as, you know, Pretend this is a, if we were to pretend this is a Windows prompt here, what we would do is uh, we could just say that uh, we would say FTP, our attacker box, which I'm not sure what that is at the moment. Let's see. I'm not in Tmux right now, so I'll have to do it this way. So let's just say this IP address here, right? Got uh, some of my Black Hat Python stuff open from earlier. But uh, yeah, we, we would just say FTP, our attacker's IP address, right? 
and we'd hit enter and then it would prompt us for authentication right and it will uh, the python ftp server defaults to password anonymous or username anonymous and password anonymous right anonymous ftp right so once you do that you logged in now i guess the only thing that i didn't mention here is it, it kind of matters where you start this thing i don't know if i can connect to this on my local host if i can then i'll show you um because it works the same way for linux right we would just put the IP address, or I mean, I could probably put that IP, right? And it'll ask us for the username, anonymous, and the password of anonymous as well. And now we're, we're in, right? So you can see what it is. And I ran this from the, what directory is this? So, th I mean, that's pretty much what I was going to say is wherever you run this from is where it's going to, where you're going to be when you get here. I don't think uh, there's a PWD or anything, is there? Yeah, so let me quit out of this. I'll show you guys how to how really use this in a practical sense. Let's say we want to transfer WinPs, right? That's a pretty common thing we would do, right? We want to run some post-exploitation on the box. Well, we can go into where we have that stored. WinPs and uh, WinPs exe. And WinPs, this is a really long <laughs> directory here, direct long path to this file. But uh, I think bin, hopefully I'm going to be able to find this 64-bit. Uh, Let's say we're dealing with a 64-bit system. Jeez, um, yeah, we finally found it. But yeah, we're here, right? So say we want to drop this executable onto our target windows box. Well, we would just navigate to this directory and then from here run the command, if I can get there, uh, this one here, right? To start up our FTP server on port 21. So now, as you see here, when we connect to this, imagine in this case that we were on a windows box, right? The command is the exact same. That's a nice thing about this. So we just run FTP IP address, anonymous and then anonymous so now we're in so if we look around we see our box so we would say hey let's drop into binary mode and then we just get the we just get this file here and uh oops we just get the file and then we've done the transfer at that point right and, you know, alternatively, if we want to transfer anything the other way, like from the Windows box to our attacker's box, we say put and then the name of the file. So there you go. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all you need to know for this extra transfer method. The thing about file transfer is you're going to have a way, you know, your way that you like to do things 90% of the time. 90% of the time is going to work. But there will be that 10% where, for whatever reason, you can't do it the way you're accustomed to doing it. And in that case, just having more ammunition, if you will, right, you know, more ways of doing things uh, is going to come in great, great handy. Remember, you don't need this stuff until you do. So, yeah, hopefully this video helped you guys. If it has, definitely subscribe, hit the like button. And if you want to learn some more, you know, I've done more things on tra file transfer and things like that over in the What You Need to Know for OSCP playlist uh, right over there. Go ahead and check out some of those videos. I'll see you guys right over there. Thanks for watching.